Although neither you nor I could hear the bar's clank closed, Dr. Anita Louise Jackson's current practice address is the cell in which she's being held pending formal sentencing. Although indictments are often full of hot air, the January 2022 indictment of Raleigh, North Carolina ENT, Anita Louise Jackson on multiple counts centering around her reuse in more than 1,400 cases of single-use balloon cyanoplasty devices ended in her January 23 conviction on all counts in the final indictment. Count one was device alteration. Count two through 11 were illegal remunerations. Counts 12 through 14 involved making false statements relating to healthcare benefits. Counts 15 to 16 related to aggravated identity theft. Counts 17 through 19, mail fraud. Count 20, conspiracy. At trial, it was shown that between 2011 and the end of 2017, Dr. Jackson performed 1,555 balloon sinoplasty surgeries using the Intellis Express device on 99 Medicare beneficiary patients. The Intellis Express device is cleared by the FDA to be used only on one patient during one surgery. After that, the device must be discarded. However, the evidence showed that between 2012 and 2017, Dr. Jackson obtained at most 36 new Intellis devices and that she misled and did not inform her patients that they were receiving a procedure with an adulterated device. Jackson admitted on cross-examination that she had sufficient money to buy every patient a new device, but chose not to do so. Jackson induced patients to come to the office for a free sinus spa and to receive a treatment they may not need or may not have agreed to had the full out-of-pocket cost to the patient been disclosed. In an effort to continue obtaining patients for the procedures, Jackson wrote off or otherwise hid the full cost of the procedure on any bills sent to the patient after their visit to her North Carolina practice called Greater Carolina Ear, Nose, and Throat. The patient portion of the sinoplastic surgery could be as high as $1,500 for Medicare beneficiaries, which the jury found was not disclosed to patients. In some cases, she induced patients by not collecting copays and was convicted on 10 counts of that behavior. She was also convicted of three counts of making false statements relating to healthcare benefits, two counts of aggravated identity theft, and three counts of mail fraud. Between 2017 and 18, Dr. Jackson became the subject of three audits by Medicare contractors. The jury found that she fabricated medical records supplied to the auditors in an effort to keep more than $1.7 million that had already been paid to her by Medicare. She was also convicted of two counts of aggravated identity theft related to the defendant's knowing use of forged patient signatures on documents in which patients allegedly declared that they received the surgeries from the defendant and that they needed them. Her mail fraud convictions pertain to her fraudulent use of fake medical records to deceive auditors and to deceive a fellow ENT physician who was tricked into signing a sworn statement that her medical documentation supported her prior balloon sinoplasty surgeries. The defendant was also convicted of conspiring with her staff to commit device adulteration to pay illegal remunerations, to make false records, and to commit mail fraud. Jackson faces a maximum term of imprisonment of 20 years for mail fraud, 10 years for paying illegal remunerations, and five years for conspiracy and making false statements, as well as three years for adulteration with the intent to defraud or mislead. Aggravated identity theft carries a two-year mandatory prison sentence, consecutive to any other punishment. Jackson also faces fines exceeding a quarter million dollars. Additionally, the jury ordered forfeiture in the amount of $4,794,000 plus change. 
The obvious and more esoteric lessons for you are, one, don't adulterate devices or other items and then reuse or supply them as unadulterated. Two, don't subsequently lie about the bona fides of the devices or items. Three, don't bill for items that were not provided. Four, don't routinely write off Medicare patient balances or even present Medicare patients with false bills that indicate no or falsely low copays. Five, don't use template or even worse, cloned medical records to support your claims, even if the services were completely, properly, and ethically performed. Six, don't falsify records and signatures or the date on which they were obtained. Seven, don't lie to federal auditors. And perhaps the most important, don't set yourself up to go to prison by thinking you are setting the government up to overpay you.